In the earlier presentation, we introduced the impulse signal delta t. Uh, we described it in the time domain, and we showed that the impulse was a signal that um, had this large burst of energy at time t equal to zero. So when we're visualizing it, we think of a signal that has a value of zero at all points in time except at time t equal to zero we get this large burst of energy which we show as this vertical spike with an arrow like that okay so this is the time domain view value of zero everywhere except at time t equal to zero okay in this presentation we're going to look at the impulse signal from a frequency domain point of view and from previous presentations we know that all signals are made up of sinusoids uh, the impulse signal has a very important characteristic that it contains all sinusoids, all possible sinusoids. Um, so that's, that's a very important point to note. So the impulse signal, it contains sinusoids of all possible frequencies. And that's very, very useful. Uh, when it comes to systems analysis, as we'll see later on. So it contains units of all possible frequencies. Not all signals will have this property. Um, now, this can be a difficult thing to appreciate at first. Like, um, So what I'm saying is that this fairly simple looking signal, although it is, uh, it uh, can be difficult to appreciate it in itself, but I'm saying that this signal is made up of all possible sinusoids. So by adding sinusoids together, I can reproduce this signal. Um, now I found that difficult to appreciate the first time I came across it. So what I've done is put together a little MATLAB script to demonstrate the um, this basic idea that adding sinusoids together can create this impulse-like shape. So here is that MATLAB script. Basically, um, I am creating sinusoids. So in this for loop here, um, I, you can see that I'm creating a sinusoid. And the sinusoid is a cosine waveform of frequency f. Now, in the for loop, you can see that the f value has been changed. So in this case, I'm going through the for loop four times. Uh, the first time through the for loop, f will be 1, so that represents 1 hertz sinusoid. Next time, f will be 2, 2 hertz sinusoid, and so on. And inside in the for loop, I'm adding the sinusoids together. So each time I go through the, the, the for loop, I'm basically adding the sinusoids together or accumulating the sinusoids. Um, now, I'm going to plot the sinusoid each time we go through the loop the first time. I'll show you this just to, to show you what's going on. Um, also note that uh, I suppose I'm, I'm plotting just a short segment of the sinusoid. Theoretically the sinusoid would go from minus infinity to plus infinity uh, in terms of time. But uh, in this I'm plotting minus half a second up to half a second. Okay, So I'm showing segments of a sinusoid. Um, I'll just run the script now hopefully you'll appreciate what's going on we size that so you can see the shape so this is my time axis down here you can see that it's centered at time t equal to zero and um, that's plus half a second to minus half a second and here we have a sinusoid of one hertz I'll hit the spacebar and you'll see a sinusoid of two hertz appear spacebar again you'll see three hertz sinusoid appear and there's a four hertz sinusoid okay um, and when I hit the spacebar the f at last you're going to see the uh, accumulation of those four sinusoids so the result of adding those four sinusoids together and that produces this shape and you can see that at time t equal to zero we get this large uh, amplitude okay and a relatively small amplitude elsewhere okay so that's by adding four sinusoids together let me go back into the script i'll change that to a value of 10 and we'll run the script again 
So there's my 1 Hz sinusoid. So I should have 10 sinusoids altogether. 1 Hz, 2 Hz, 3 Hz, etc. So there's my 1 Hz. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And when I hit the spacebar again, we should see the result of adding those sinusoids together. And you can see it produces this shape. And you can see it's getting. Uh, we have this large amplitude at time t equal to zero, but zero, uh, well not zero, but low amplitude everywhere else. Okay. That's so after adding ten sinusoids together. Now I'm going to comment out these two lines and change this value up to a hundred. And we run the script again, and there's the result. We're getting this burst of energy again time t equal to zero. Change it to a value of 900. There we go again. You can see that we got low energy everywhere except at time t equal to zero. Now I've added 900 sinusoids together. Now the impulse of course is made up of an infinite number of sinusoids all of different frequencies. Um, so hopefully, hopefully this video will, this demonstration lets you appreciate that by adding sinusoids together you can create this burst of energy at time t equal to zero and low energy everywhere else. Now it takes a little step or a leap of faith to accept that if you add an infinite number of sinusoids you get this impulse that's very very large in energy okay, uh, and zero everywhere else but hopefully that gets, the, gets you thinking about how it could happen. Okay, um, so that's that's a uh, that's important. That's an important point to appreciate. Uh, now, the reason why this is so impo important or so useful is because if we were to analyze a system, so we have some system. Generally, what we want to know is how the system responds to some input. So we put an input into the system. We want to know what comes out. Okay. Now, if we were to put an impulse in, really then what we're doing is putting in a signal with all sinusoids. So let's just think about that. So if I was to put an impulse in, looking at it from a frequency domain point of view, so frequency against time, or sorry, frequency against amplitude, what I'd have then is a, sig a signal that contains all sinusoids, and I'll show it as this flat line, so this is an impulse, but it's an impulse from the frequency domain point of view, this is what I'd be putting into the system, okay? So essentially what I'm doing is passing all sinusoids through the system. Now, because a signal is made up of any signal is made up of sinusoids, then if we know how a system responds to an impulse, then we'll be able to predict how it respond to any signal. Um, let's try to think about that with an example. So let's think about uh, just a, a system. Let's say I pass this impulse through, and let's see what I I'll imagine that I got some output and I'm looking at the output in the frequency domain so let's just say I got this signal as my output so this is what I get out of my system um, I'll just give it some values we'll say that's 0 0.5 that's a value of 2 okay okay so if I was looking at this I would go okay this system, what it does is it reduces lower frequencies by a factor of 0 0.5 and amplifies higher frequencies by a factor of 2. Okay? Because this is basically my impulse response in the frequency domain. So this is my impulse response. And what it tells me is how do different frequencies were altered by the system? So we can see that if we take we'll take a look at one particular frequency, let's look at this frequency here, 
I haven't given it an exact value, but we'll just say at this frequency here, we'll, we'll say we'll just say it's 10 hertz for the sake of it. We'll say that 10 hertz signal, if we went along here to 10, which would be this point here, assuming that the scales match, then we'd say, okay, the 10 hertz signal, the 10 hertz sinusoid, which is part of this impulse, has been amplified by 0 0.5. Um, okay. That's interesting, that's useful. Um, and the reason why it's so useful is because if I had a signal, any other signal, and all signals are made up of sinusoids, imagine I had a, sig uh, a signal, this is a new signal here now, so we'll just say about new signal, and it's not an impulse, it's just a regular signal, and we'll say it's made up of three components like this. Actually, I might get rid of that middle one. We'll just put two components instead. Um, and we'll make this one twice as large as this one. Okay. Now, this is my new signal. I'm going to pass this new signal through the system. So it's going to go into the system. I want to know what comes out. Now, if I know the impulse response, I'll be able to go, OK, let's look at the two frequencies that I'm interested in. This new signal only contains two sinusoids. So let's look at these two points. This is 10 as well, and we'll say this one is, let's see, that'll be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, say. So we'll say that's 50. I'd look at the impulse response at, freq at 50 hertz as well as at 10 hertz. So 50 hertz would be somewhere up here. And I'll be able to say, okay, that 50 hertz component, that was amplified by 2. Okay, so therefore, the frequency content, if this new signal was passed through this system, would look something like this. The 10 hertz component would be reduced by a factor of a half, so it'd be reduced, so there's my 10 hertz and my 50 hertz would be amplified by 2. So that would become quite large. Uh, those might be the best drawing in the world, but hopefully you get the basic idea. So the key point is that if I pass an impulse through a system, that's effectively the same as passing all sinusoids through the system. And if we know how the system responds to all those sinusoids, which, which is the case if we get the impulse response, well then we'll be able to predict how the system will respond to any signal. Now this is a very, very important point, one of the key ones. So I suggest that you spend a little bit of time appreciating that or working on that. And I might just do a few more videos on examples of that later on, okay? but. Just spend some time trying to appreciate that. Um, I'm just going to clear all that for the moment. And I just want to finish up by highlighting those two key points. The impulse signal is comprised of sinusoids of all possible frequencies. Okay. The amplitude of the sinusoids are the same and the phase shift is zero. You can see that in the demonstration. You can also prove it mathematically. Um, which isn't too difficult to do. Um, the other thing is that all signals, any signal, I could say there, is made up of sinusoids of different amplitudes and phases. Okay. So since an impulse contains sinusoids of all possible frequencies, if we know how a system responds to an impulse, we can predict how it will respond to any input. And this is very, very important. Okay, thanks for your attention.